Hey everyone, this is Alan McKay, and I'm just going to give a brief uh, walkthrough of just a very simple approach uh, that I use a lot uh, just for generating uh, proxy meshes. Because a lot of times you're given geometry to work with, with fume effects or real flow or other different particle systems, and the whole idea is that you want to be able to. Um, generate particles moving over it and everything else and basically what happens is that there's holes in it, it doesn't quite work um, you know a lot of different things and because of that it can really kind of screw you up um, so rather than telling a modeler to go and kind of build proxy geo which they may do a good job of or maybe they don't have time or maybe it's just going to come back wrong or they're just going to hit optimize and send it back to you. Um, let's say you had like a car or something that needs to interact with fluids and it has like hundreds of different parts and basically you don't have time to remodel that and you can't use that geo because it's too broken apart particles aren't going to be able to run from one surface to another very consistently um, a perfect example is this where we want like particles dripping and splashing over geo um, a teapot by definition is about three or four different objects and has holes, it's very broken up mesh. Um, this is a way to generate a proxy mesh very quickly that you can then use to run particle systems over. So we're going to walk through how to use this and then from there you can do it on characters or anything else you want to do. So let's begin. Okay, so to begin, let's just say I have a sphere and what we're going to do I've just got this tool here I've made, so click that, pre-roll, and a V-Ray installed. Okay, so I just moved my rain gizmo up a bit higher. And play this, I might make it red so it's a little easier to see. for fun. Make it a bit transparent. Okay, so again, just quickly set this up, but now I've got like rain dripping down a surface. And this is pretty easy to do when you're just dealing with a sphere. But let's say that we need to do it on uh, some more complicated geometry than that. Um, for instance, a teapot or so I've just loaded up this character and I'm just going to get the basics of her but uh, this is just a, a model that ships with Max. Now this character has multiple objects, you can't really see it, but there are multiple objects and open surfaces, the whole shebang. Um, it's going to collapse all this down, attach the hair. Now, if I were to do the same thing on this system, pick execute, and run the same thing again. We'll notice everything's exploding and not really working the way it should. Now that's a huge problem. Um, basically it's just because the surface is kind of messed up and obviously there's more worse situations than this. This just has a lot of open uh, surfaces. We run an STL check. We got to see that. Yeah, a lot of errors. Um, and at the same time, like there's other situations where the geometry is too complex or just very kind of weird, and you might just want to simplify the geo so that way it's just something that fume effects or real flow or a lot of other things would be able to handle a lot more effectively. So you just want to clean up the mesh, but you don't want to go and remodel and make a proxy model all the time. So there's a workaround for that, okay? And that is that. Um, if I, I'm just going to hide everything for a moment. In fact, I'm just going to reload the scene. Hide everything, get the model, 
collapse the stack again, attach. Alright, so at least we have a, a mesh now. Now what I want to do is in particle flow, I'm just going to create an empty flow uh, with a birth grid. Link these up and just do the standard thing here. I'm just going to cap all the stuff out, it's 100%, infinite particles. Now the most important thing is under birth grid and this is really straightforward. All I'm going to do is choose restrict by mesh and choose my model. And that way it's going to limit um, the particles only being created in here. In other words, it's going to create like a level set of the geo. So first thing I want to do is bring this down enough that we can see more particles being distributed inside of here. Now this model is a bit small. It's not the most ideal size. But as we can see, uh, we're generating enough particles. I'm just going to go back in here, make sure it's all capped out. Anyway, so basically I end up with something like this. Still working on it, but uh, and for the sake of this example, I might actually make her a little bit bigger. Um, it'll just be a bit easier. But one thing to make this a bit better is I'm going to go back to this area and cap the holes. And that at least will close the surface up, even though it's not ideal. Um, now when I do this, it'll have a better understanding as to what it needs to do. And we can start to see a, a mesh being generated here. Now, what I might do is continue with this density. And turn on interactive update. And that way we're getting something a bit better. And I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to hide my mesh. So this is what I end up with, which looks pretty good to me. Now, that was just creating a level set. Uh, of what we wanted and that's just a, a neat way for us to be able to generate this information very quickly for our model. Now the next step would be that once we've created this um, point structure or level set um, I want to then go in and Basically, I want to go into Frost, so make sure you got Frost. And I'm just going to pick this model. Now, right now, the scale is a bit off, so let's just bump the scale down a little bit. And there's that one little weird chunk that's happening there. So, disable Frost for a second. Uh, I'm just going to try resetting transform on this. It might simplify it a little bit. But I'm getting this one little weird area. Usually, I would assume I wouldn't have that. Either way, it seems to have fixed it. Okay, that was weird. Anyway, so this is all working. Go back to Frost. And I'm just going to focus on this for the moment. All right. Now she's put on a bit of weight, no big deal. Um, we'll just bring this down a little bit till I find a, a level that I'm happy with. Something like that works out well. I'm going to change this from spheres to metaparticles because we've got a few different things we could do here. Just so we can look at our options, um, 
this one here works pretty well. Um, just for kneading the mesh. And the other option is to actually just use metaballs. So it's up to us which one we want to use. But once we're happy with that, um, I might actually add a relax modifier to it, just so I can simplify it a little bit more. Collapse it. And we have our level set geo. Only problem is it's really dense. So I'm just going to add a pro optimizer. And bring this down a little bit. So there's the end result. We've managed to generate a clean mesh. based on that which is accurate and it's completely clean uh, no holes or anything in it freshly generated that we can work from so if you were a tank or something or something a bit more complex uh, like an army tank or car or whatever with a lot of objects this would be the best way to actually go about generating a clean stable mesh from it And again, even with frost, we can always do a low res by default. Like it doesn't need to be as dense as I made it. Oops. So even though the geometry might end up being quite low, I can set my uh, viewport here to be a lot lower as well. So as long as it's a closed surface that sort of thing should work fine and we still have controls to kind of blend it out a little bit so that sort of thing as well is a pretty neat way to go about it um, like I said there's a few different ways that it can be approached depending on what we're after But anyway, that's just a quick way to be able to generate this. So I'm just going to save this out as clean mesh. And I'm just going to run this script again. And I'm just going to position the rain system a little bit higher and it's kinda hard to see I make this girl black there we go 
kind of hard to see, but the dripping uh, is all working perfectly on the system now. So the scale of my uh, character is a little bit off. I haven't really been measuring this, but as we can see, uh, it's all working fine. So fume effects, everything else would work. Um, no problem at all with this. And yeah, so I mean, it's just an easy way to generate Um, effects into a shot. And to have like a clean mesh that it works over. And again, this is using the original mesh uh, for rendering. And I'm just doing a couple of drops, nothing crazy. Uh, just like 10 drops on this character, but um, You know, obviously it, the particles are interacting with the proxy mesh, which is hidden, and I have these particles being generated over the surface, and it all moves over it perfectly. So that sort of thing works out really well, and uh, yeah. So this is something that would work with uh, Fume and every other system out there, but it's just a very easy and intuitive way to uh, build a clean mesh. So like I said, if you had a tank or something that had like a lot of different parts in it, uh, this would allow you to quickly generate something that's completely clean uh, and flawless through uh, level set and frost together. And if you don't have frost, then you can always use blob mesh in the create panel, um, compound objects, blob mesh. And it's a little slower, but you only need it for one frame, and then you just collapse it down, and you're good to go. And if you have any questions, you can visit my website at www.alanmckay.com or email me at amckay at alanmckay.com. Excellent. Thank you.